All right, so a lot of times when I've been presenting uh, sessions and training on Power Pages, a common question I get is, hey, I want to build a Power Pages site, but I don't want to link to Dataverse. I want to show data that's in my SQL server because I have an SQL database and I'd like to surface that information on a Power Pages site. Or in some cases, people might also say, hey, I have a SharePoint list and I want to display that on a Power Pages site. SharePoint really isn't a database, but that's a discussion for another day. So in this video, I'm going to walk through how we can take an SQL table and surface that on a Power Pages site using Dataverse virtual tables. Let's take a look. So here I'm in my Azure SQL Explorer and I have a table called products in my SQL database, my Azure SQL database or SQL database, depending, I don't even want to get into that argument of well, how do you pronounce it, SQL or SQL? Anyways, I have some fields here. Note I also have a field here for account ID. Let's keep this one in mind. This is going to be used as my foreign key field. It is set up as a nvarchar max, meaning like multiple lines of text. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but just note that for the rest, I have name, description, price, quantity, regular fields that you would see in a typical products database. Let's take a look at the actual data table itself. I have some ID there, which is a unique number, the widget uh, description, um, you know, name, description, price, quantity. Um, so these are the types of information that I have sitting in my SQL table. So now let's flip over to Power Apps or Power Pages and see how we can make this into a virtual table. So I'm here in my Power Pages home site. I have a site here that I want to be able to surface my product table to. But before I do that, I need to set up the virtual table. Now I can go into solutions here. If you haven't noticed this before, solutions are now part of Power Pages. I recently did a video on how to move solutions from one environment to another. Uh, within this environment, I've created a solution earlier. I just called it virtual tables, but again, you can call it whatever you'd like. And I'm gonna go into my tables node here. And what I wanna do is I want to create a new table. And I'm going to create, instead of a table that's gonna be a regular Dataverse table, I'm gonna choose a table from external data, which means a virtual table. Now, there's other videos and this feature has been out for a while, so you can use this in your model-driven or your regular Canvas apps. What I'm gonna to talk to you today is about how to specifically use it in Power Pages. So here we have two options to use this virtual connector, SharePoint or SQL Server. I believe other ones are in the pipeline or to use the custom connectors as well, plus other tie-ins to other systems. Currently you can tie into Dynamics 365 FNO. Um, eventually I believe you'll be able to tie into Dynamics 365 Business Central, although it's not there yet. I'm not a Business Central expert, but I know that is something that people have been asking about. So here is the SQL server. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to have to first add a connection. And it's gonna come up with the connection management. I can use a service principle for today. I'm just gonna use Azure AD integrated. I'm going to create that and sign in with my own account. So there we have our connection. Let's go back to our Power Pages solutions page. And here I'm just gonna refresh and I have my connection set up here, perfect. Now let's just hit next. And I need to put in my SQL server name. So I'm going to have to fill this in from my um, other values here. So you can get these values from your Azure portal or from the SQL, uh, Azure SQL Explorer. I have these values in here now. I'm gonna hit next. And it's going to search the table. Hmm, interesting, it's not allowing me to use this particular IP address. Um, so what I'm, that means I'm gonna to have to do is make sure it gets added to the firewall rule. So again, I'm just going through the motions here. I've added that IP address into my firewall rules and I'm going to hmm, allow Azure services and resources to access the server. I wonder if that also means power apps. So anyways, I, I was able to come back here now that I've set up that firewall, I was able to refresh. I can actually now see my tables. I'm going to choose products 
And I'm going to leave this configure table and column names. I'm going to hit next. And it's filled in the names of everything. That's great. I can go hit next. And we're just going to review and finish. All right, so we have our, our table here that got created. That's all well and good. And so what we can do now is go back into our home here and begin to edit our site. And basically at this point, we're going through the exact same process as what we would normally do when we're creating a list on a page. So I'm just going to, first off, just going to go in and go into my data workspace. Yeah, and here is our products. So I'm gonna go and create a view here, same as I would normally, all products, and add things, description, price, quantity. It's all well and good. Publish view, pages, new page, and let's call this products. list and again if you've created one list in power pages you've created them all all products done and very much the same with regular tables you're going to need to set the permissions so let's just set this and we'll just for now we'll give it um, read access and we'll just give that to both anonymous and authenticated user roles. Um, actually, let's just, for now, for fun, let's just use authenticated roles. I'm gonna hit save. And we have this list here. Let's preview our site. And we don't see anything here because I'm not signed in. I'm going to sign in. For now, I'm just gonna choose Azure AD. And we have this list of information that is coming from our SQL database being surfaced on a Power Pages site. So for those of you who asked in the past about using SQL as a backend for Power Pages, well, here you go. Now let's take this a step further. What if we want to apply um, user-related security, basically tying that into um, our web roles so that you can only see the particular data that you're allowed to see based on who you are, or what account or contact that you belong to. So I'm back into my Power Pages homepage. I'm gonna go into solutions and I'm gonna go into my virtual table solutions. Now, what I wanna do is in my products, I want to be able to relate uh, this to my accounts table, which is in Dataverse. Now, this is, the instructions are on Microsoft Docs, but it's a little bit unclear. I'm gonna walk you through it. So the very first thing you're gonna do is notice when I first created that table in SQL, I had that account ID, which was going to be my foreign key. What I'm going to do here within Dataverse, I'm going to select it and I'm going to delete it from this environment, which might seem a bit counterintuitive, but just bear with me. So I'm going to delete this particular object. It is not going to delete that from your SQL server. You don't need to worry about that. With virtual tables, you don't have that ability. So it's deleted that successfully. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into relationships. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new many to one relationship, meaning I'm going to have many products that can be related to one account. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to choose account. And here is I have to give it an external name. So this name needs to match the column name that is in my SQL server, which was account ID. And I'm gonna you know, make sure that matches. Again, let's just slide that over, double check. Um, here, account ID. It might even be better if I cut and paste that. And we're going to paste that into our external name here just to be on the safe side. Yes, it all matches, that's all good. I'm gonna hit done. And so now what we've done is we've created a relationship between a Dataverse table and that SQL table. Now that SQL table, again, it's a virtual table, so Dataverse is going to treat it. But this whole relationship step is a little bit different. So we've set this up now, which is great. 
because now what I can do is I can go into my data itself. Let's go into products and yeah, I got that. And what I can do is I'm going to scroll over. I'm going to show my account field. Notice it now has the account and I can begin to add some of my account data here. Now I haven't set up any accounts yet, so I'll need to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my site here. Let's go edit that site. I'm going to go into data workspace and then the products here. Let's just add account. Ah, we see account is here. That's cool. And with our data, we can begin to associate these records with uh, values in our database. All right, so here I can go in and now actually begin to assign um, records to account. So now I've actually established that lookup. So this is where I want to take it one step further and begin to associate it using the web role so we can actually protect some of this data. So what I'm going to do is actually go into my setup. I'm going to go into the table permissions. And let's take a look. Currently, we've got this set to global access. I'm going to flip this to account access, meaning I only want to show the data where I'm related based on the account. And that is, again, for authenticated users. So I've set this up to authenticated users using related tables, using relationship, using account access. And of course, you can read the docs to understand completely how table permissions worked. We've set this up now. The next thing I want to do is make sure the contact that I'm logged in with is associated to a specific account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Power Pages Management app. And it is called Power Pages Management now if you're using the enhanced data model. I'm going to go to the security section where I have contacts. And I have a list of contacts here. Here's the contact that I've signed in with using Azure AD. I'm going to assign that to one of those accounts. So we see here I am actually associated to the ABC Corporation. So I'm going to sign into the portal and see what access, what, what products I have access to. So I'm actually signed in the portal. Notice that I've signed in as myself. I'm limited to the number of products I've linked to, which means that the web roles and the table permissions are working for that link between my Dataverse and my SQL table. So not only can we surface SQL information on our Power Pages site, we can also protect it with table permissions and web roles, which is extremely important when you're protecting your data. So this is a very cool feature. Hope you this really helped you out and that if you need to actually surface SQL data on a Power Pages site or even SharePoint lists, even though it's not a database, it is now a feature that you can use. Hope this helps. Have a great day. I just want to tell you about a conference coming up, the European Power Platform Conference that's coming up on June 20th to 22nd in Dublin, Ireland. I have a session there. It's Crash Course in Power Pages, where I walk you through the basics of getting a Power Page spun up and maybe a few other things that we found out along the way. Um, Definitely would love to meet you there and be happy to answer any questions you have and meet you in person. And of course, if you've not registered yet, be sure to use the discount code BOOST, B-O-O-S-T, that gets you 10% off uh, the registration fee. So totally worth it. Liking, looking forward to seeing you in Dublin. And if you can't make it to Dublin, then of course, be excited to see you actually in Copenhagen in Denmark in September. And there we have some pre-day workshops. Um, a lot of great folks in the community are doing pre-day workshops. Um, I'm actually doing a workshop on building powerful websites using Power Pages where um, I will kind of go through a lot of what I do on these videos, but also some other stuff as well. And it's a little bit of a deep dive in not only building a power page site sort of from ground up, but diving into some of those other cases and things that you might run into projects and how to attack those, address those, also how to plan out your power pages project and, you know, move it uh, through the LM process and go lives and things like that. So definitely worthwhile, a great workshop, be very uh, happy to see you folks there. And again, I could dive in, answer questions and help you out with your own projects. I'd be excited to learn what you're working on.
And also, I'd like to invite you to listen, like, and subscribe to the Power Platform Boost podcast, where every two weeks, Elika Akraback and myself, we go through all the news and exciting things that are happening in the world of the Power Platform and Microsoft technologies. Plus, we also begin to dive in and chat a little bit about uh, some certain new things or some other features or the community around the Power Platform. So definitely check out our podcast very much again. Looking forward to hearing your feedback and what would you like to hear in our podcast? Uh, definitely let us know.